Hey, how you guys doing? All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna put this on for you. You can watch it while I'm. While I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. That puzzles, what are we doing? Practice, let's put it there because I might need that page for later. Okay. Alrighty then, let's get a moving and a grooving on this. Okay, we gotta turn the board. E4, E6, D4, and then D5. Start the French. The French can turn into the Tarash variation. With here, I'll show you. This could be the. This will be the Tarash variation. And then you have the Tarash line. Or you can. Uh, <clears throat> you can also do the. What looks like. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Trying to remember if that there's that uh, setup. That's the Tarash. I'm trying to remember what the classic line is. It's been a little bit. It's something like this. Then here, then here, and here, then uh, here, and there. It's just kind of like the classic variation of the French. And it's it's this here. I got that, but. He did the linear variation. And of course we know <clears throat> if you try something like this, we can just take, take, and then take. And if we try something like that, we just play up and we're holding on to a tight pawn. We got our pawn. So E5 is the main line of the linear. 
Dead C5. And this this play right here is more of a, a blitz line. That's what Grandmaster Simon Williams talks about. It's more, <clears throat> excuse me. It's more of a blitz variation. Uh, you play hey there e7 e7 and then if queen takes then you go into the poison pawn variation but this time it's losing for um, for black because of this pin so if he ever took he would actually have to retreat his queen out and you still have that and so he can't really play um, this move here this loses on the spot so don't worry about that. They're not going to be able to play that because if they do, we already went over the line, and they try to retreat out. This uh, wins on the spot, wins a piece. So that's why Knight F3 <clears throat> is playable. We usually play Knight BD6, which you can play this move or you can take. It all, it all depends what, what you want to do. This is a playable idea too because if he takes here then you take there and um, you still have to be careful of black has to, black can actually win that so so really uh, you, you would have to after takes take there uh, so I actually took the wrong way. This is actually the proper taste because it covers but now he can take and you've kinda of got a little bit of a problem a slight problem because he can actually play back and cover but you still have that there so maybe you know it's still playable you still can win a piece so bishop takes this bishop move is very vital it cuts the line so that this could be played with winning two pawns so he has to take here knight takes and then uh, queen takes knight c6 to hold the bishop and so the queen's now not attacking g7 and now we castle kingside and cover g7 and now we're preparing to uh, play f6 a3 is played we take Bishop takes because if <clears throat> if White takes, look at this mess of pawns. So the bishop's going to take, but in so taking, it now is biting on a granite pawn, and we're not going to want to play f6 now. Of course, that'd be silly. He would just grab that and uh, not good. So first of all, we have to make sure that um, you can actually prepare this setup but I don't know I wouldn't want to risk that this type of a pin so Queen uh, uh, B6 is a really strong move here because it attacks this pawn and if the bishop ever decides to leave trying to go for some sort of an attack here uh, we, we can just come back here and, and actually just win the rook and then when the king comes up or comes over here we just come back and so that's why uh, bishop e uh, d3 was played and now the now the queen is uh, looking at potentially playing uh, d5 and trying to uh, take scope on the e5 pawn. So queen h3. This is playable. So if if you were thinking about that, it is playable. So you, you could retreat back and you could grab there. But then you would have a retreat. And so here you would take back so you really don't have any attack but you did win a pawn hey how you doing let's see if the engine likes that I'm thinking that's the let's see if we play here oh it's mate mate in one so that's a sneaky move so you gotta be careful ask yourself what is my opponent's uh, move 
after uh, when they play H uh, when they play H three. Ask yourself, what are they threatening, and do I have to worry about it, or can I implement my plan? And of course, at this moment, we have to worry about it. H six is uh, a crucial move. F four. And then now uh, b5 is a playable idea with uh, trying to lock down the queen side. So g, g5, g4 which with a uh, huge onslaught that he's trying to uh, break down. This is kind of a more of a crazy line. And then uh, b4 which was played by Emmanuel Burge. f6. And so he's now hacking away at the center and he's got a safe king if this gets played we don't have to now worry about um, taking so we can actually hack at the uh, aft pawn or the e pawn I mean so takes rook takes and then g5 white's going all all blazing it's going glory all glory and blazing of fire that's what it wants E5 is a really strong move. If he takes here, the bit the queen's lost. So, so the queen has to move, and then now we're uh, coming crashing in. If of course takes here, now this is uh, a threat. So the king would have to move and see, uh, when, as they say, wouldn't want to be uh, <laughs> in that type of. So F1 to guard here. Uh, E6 is now playable because we, we can uh, if he uh, tries to uh, potentially castle queenside we can actually push onward and start uh, attacking and getting an outpost on uh, an attack oops hold on what did I what in the world what happened there yikes that was weird. That reset everything. That, eh. Let's get to our spot. Uh, e5. Okay, there. 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 Okay. E6. All right. Now, if he uh, plays something like, we'll say, takes here, we actually have a, a check. So he would have to move there. So uh, takes. And now we're attacking the bishop. F5 takes check, and this this was a uh, devastating move. It was a combination that wins uh, material, so that if uh, bishop takes here, yeah, checkmate. So he can't really do anything but come back there, and then at that point you're losing uh, the queen, and the queen will fall. So, I thought that was an interesting move for sure. That was like, because you can't play here if he does his mate too. So it's like, wow. So he has to play there and then he loses a queen. It's like, hello. Are you uh, ready for um, uh, our puzzles? Is everybody ready for puzzles? Do I hear a yes? Are we ready for for puzzle for some puzzles? I'm ready. All right. Let's do it to it. Let's see if yep, we're all in. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. Let's get our points back. Let's get back into the 2400 uh, club again.
see here. We have uh, potential candidate moves, knight, um, e7 check. You always have to look at those. Or a7. a7 might be a playable move. So what are you thinking? Uh, what you thinking? Are you looking at any one of those ideas? And you can also base uh, sometimes, ooh, we can actually win a, uh, oh, we're in check, snap. Drat, we're in check. Good thing, yeah. Okay. We really can't go, uh, we can't, we're in check, our king's in check by the queen. Our opponent played uh, d6 check, not f6, uh, d6, d6 check, so we have to make a plan. Um, now we have to remodify kind of our plan. There's, there's uh, two ways of handling the check, actually three ways. There's <clears throat> knight e5, knight e5. Uh, or queen f um, queen f four or g three. There's there's three ways of handling it. I guess we could move too. I guess there's a couple other moves like king uh, g1, king g1. So I'll, I'll plug that. I'll plug uh, these other lines into. There's actually, I guess, one more. Right here. You have those to choose from king g1, knight f5, uh, queen f4, and g3 are playable moves. Well I, well, I guess you could play queen e5, but uh, maybe queen e5 does work. I'm thinking now that, uh, I'm thinking queen, uh, queen e5 might actually work here. Because if uh, queen takes uh, c6, we have queen to uh, b8, or d8, it's d8, is, uh, no, uh, we have, no, queen b8, check, king would go to g7, uh, then we have queen uh, e5, check, and uh, king would, uh, uh, f6 would be played, and then we would play queen takes a uh, one. So queen, queen e5, if queen takes the knight, then we have uh, queen b8 check. King only move is a g. Okay. Okay, be blessed. See, uh, be blessed. And that would be kind of the idea. I like that idea. Oh. Not that. Huh. That's interesting. I was looking at this. I 
I guess because he could actually take here now that I think about it and then win the rook okay it would be a mistake King g1 and we're ahead let's give that a let's give that a uh, that hurts Oh, we'll get it back. We gotta stay positive. Always gotta be positive. Let's see, knight d5, king there, up, there. I'm looking at potentially uh, knight uh, d5. Uh, bishop, uh, if uh, bishop e4, it would probably be played. But uh, knight d5, if uh, king takes d5, then we have b6. If, uh, yeah, he'd be losing at that point, and there would be no way to stop it. Trying to figure out, it takes four moves to get here. I was looking at uh, C6. Uh, c6, knight c6, uh, bishop uh, e4, if we could, if somehow we can get knight uh, c5, knight c5, we would be winning, we somehow have to get the knight to c5, but it takes four moves to get there. Trying to see knight. We go b6. See b6. Bishop uh, e4. Knight uh, c8. So I don't think I'm not sure if if we have really anything there.
let's see, uh, knight uh, d5, bishop uh, c7, check, if king uh, d7, We have, oh, I'm not sure. I I put I should have put uh, I think I made a mistake there. What? How did I get? What in the world? Hold on. How did I get Bishop uh, C7? That can't be right. Hold on. That was that's weird. It's uh, King uh, King D. That was weird. King uh, D7. Not check. That was weird. That was uh, uh it's Bishop uh, E four. Whoa, that went in there wrong. Why would you go knight d five? Because if the king took on knight d5, and also you have a uh, check with uh, on the king, so you have the ability somewhat of uh, getting some infiltration. You you have to find a route in. I could try that. there okay hmm. had the right idea wrong uh, wrong move sequence We had the right idea though, so that was the uh, right idea. We'll get it back, not to worry. Okay. Let's see, rook uh, d2. We, we have this line here to look at. Rook uh, e1, check. King uh, h2. Bishop uh, e5. E5 check. If king uh, h3, king h3, we have uh, queen f uh, queen to f5 check. Bish, uh, bishop g4. And then rook to uh, h1 check. I, let's see, do we have anything? If he comes up, actually we can avoid the queen check altogether. If he comes up, if 
it comes up to h3 that's a blunder because of rook uh, um, h1 rook h1 check wins the queen so yeah get it back we will we just gotta keep uh, pushing forward let's see here if we take the rook with the queen check queen taste check is it equal material at that point There's something better that we're missing. I'm trying to find out. Huh. Let's see. Queen takes g1, or takes g1, knight takes e2, bishop takes e2. I think we got it here. Queen h4. Queen h4. The uh, queen has to stay in contact with the bishop, so. Queen to uh, f1. Knight takes uh, d3. If queen takes d3, then uh, queen f2 check rook uh, g2 rook g2 and then queen takes g2 uh, mate we're also threatening mate there too We have anything better than taking? No, because we're attacking this other bishop. Can check here and then pick up the the bishop. We can actually uh, go queen uh, queen f4 check when the king goes to uh, either g1 or um, a uh, not g1 h1 h1 or uh, king to g2 so I gotta put him in brackets uh, we have bishop takes so um,
a knight takes bishop. Yeah, we're doing good there. That was a tough one. Is he serious? That he actually's gonna play that move? Let's see. This is a this is kind of a puzzler here. You got to be careful in this line because it looks like oh, let's just grab the rooks. So G uh, H takes uh, G five, right? Uh, no, Queen to H three spoils the whole thing because now he's threatening mate. He's threatening mate at that point. And I don't know if we have a, uh, let's see, there, there. I think it's perpet at that point. Because uh, we would be able to check, yes, we'd be able to check with, um, with queen to uh, h uh, gosh, sorry, queen d8, e d8 check, king would come up to h7, then we play queen to d3. But We do three check, and I'm not sure if that's perpet. I don't know. I don't know if perpetual is actually best in that line or not. Maybe we could push the pawn after that and pull the king out. That might. That might be a play. No, he. Well, I guess he would have if he comes forward. Huh. So um, let me see. H takes G. Queen H D check. King. Let Let's uh, Let's throw in this line rather than the um, rather than Queen to D three. Let's see if um, G six doesn't G six check doesn't do anything. If he uh, plays uh, King takes G six. Then we have uh, queen to um, queen to d3 at that point, and then he has to walk forward. So I'm thinking we could actually grab the material. I think we can grab the material here, but now we ha we would have to check. We have to check on d8. And then by checking on d8, he'd have to come up to h7. Then we go g6. King takes g6. Because uh, if we uh, try checking the other way, I don't know if. I think he's got perpetual at that point. If we go up and down, it'd be perpetual. I'm thinking uh, if he comes forward, we have checked, then he would have to actually go to the bishop.
Boy, this is a tough one. Do, do you guys kind of have any other lines after um, after that? After this, do you guys have any other lines besides this here? Besides the queen d8 and then king h uh, h7. I'm thinking that we'll just play that. He comes up. Now we have to decide um, at this point, do we, uh, what do we play? Do we play g6 check? Pawn g6 check? Or do we, uh, or what do we do? Because if we want to go perpetual, we can. We can go d3, uh, d8, d, uh, queen d3, check, king h7. I know, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, do you see a line that would um, be playable for us after after this line here? After, king, after g6, check, king takes g6. What do we do after that? line because this that's our only fighting chance if we're wanting to go for a win that that's our only win we're up a whole rook we should be able somehow to uh, win this I'm, I'm looking to see if there's any way after the king takes on uh, We have a we have a perpetual in our back pocket, but do we want to? We're a whole rook up. Do we want to do a perpetual? Do we have anything better? So he's threatening made in one. So. Oh, wait a second. We can hold. Ah, uh, what am I thinking? Duh. Uh, queen d3, check. King h7, and then um, queen would just go to f1. Uh, I can't believe I didn't see that. That's a cincher. That defends. I should I should have seen that. That's that's the defensive move right there. Yeah, that's like that was like right there, because there uh, I was like there's something to that d3, and I was like, hi. Huh, if we can only stop, what went through my mind is if we can only stop g2. How could we do that? And I'm like, whoa! I could just go queen to f1. Wow! And it actually worked. That was cool. Uh, let me see. Ay ay ay. Um. We have this line, it's kind of an odd line, queen f3, check, if king uh, h2, we have queen h3, check, if king uh, g, 
one. We have um, we have bishop f3, and there's no way to stop mate in that line. Whoa, 500. Yikes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that is true. That's, that is true. Let's see here. I'm looking at potentially uh, rook uh, d8, which threatens a discovery. I'm looking at rook d8, and that that threatens. Uh, um, then, then we're actually threatening a double check, uh, bishop, uh, bishop takes. This would be our threat, double check. And with bishop takes and then mate. Because he he wants to actually play, he, his his goal is to play rook uh, e1. He wants to play rook e1. That that's his actual goal is rook e1 to kick our our queen. But if we play uh, rook d8, he plays rook uh, e1. We have bishop takes c3 uh, check, and when the king uh, goes to c1. We have queen takes uh, e1 uh, mate. What's, what? How did I get? Hold on, one second. Hold on. How did I get rook takes? Uh, there you go.
excuse me. And even if we play uh, rook d8, I know what you're thinking. What about rook takes uh, f5, right? We're not worried about rook takes f5 because bishop takes c, uh, bishop takes c3 uh, again happens, king uh, c1, and then we then we have uh, queen to e uh, e1, queen e1 check, and when the queen tries to intercept on d1. We play queen takes r, queen takes uh, d1, d1. That would be uh, mate. Or we have uh, rook takes uh, d1 is mate. So we have these two ideas. What do you think? Which one do you think is the best line? Do you like uh, Rook D8? Have you looked at Rook D8? See if it's right. I'm hoping it is. Okay, we have <laughs> we have three kind of lines here. We have um, queen e3 check, queen e3 check, bishop uh, e3 check, bishop takes uh, c3 check. Oh, man, let's see what do we got here. We have those checks. Oh, wait a second. We have we have I missed one. We have Queen F four check. So which which one are we gonna look at first? Let's see here. Huh. Let's let's look at Let's look at queen um, e3 first, check. King uh, d1. Uh, 
actually we can't do queen there it'd be he'd win so queen e3 is off the off the list sorry about that it would uh it would uh, only be i have to re uh, institute these i knew there was a problem here it's actually this one that has to be filled in for this because he would just take it at that point Th these are the only three lines so let's see queen f4 check king has um, e2 king e2 queen uh, f2 check king would go to d1 queen Uh, F1 check. King uh, D2, uh, King D2. And then queen takes uh, a1, but I don't know, do, do we win enough material with uh, that line? Bishop e3 is um, king d1, but that, see, uh, bishop e3 check, king uh, d1. And then nothing. And then we don't have any more checks. Um, bishop takes c3. Check. B takes uh, c3. And then we don't have anything anymore. So I think we're kind of stuck with uh, queen to f4. I really don't see any. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I think that's the whole basis was winning the rook. Yeah, we're doing good for sure. Uh, rook b6. Uh, rook b6. If uh, c takes uh, b6, we have h uh, h7 but then he has then he has b5 b5 check king uh, takes uh, b5 and then he'll have rook uh, h6 and he's in behind the pawn okay so that that doesn't uh, jive very good for us Rook f4 does look interesting. See, so, uh, rook f4, rook take uh, a4, rook a4, rook takes a4, check, king uh, b5, uh, and 
And what does he do at that point? Nothing. He can move his uh, rook to h. Uh, he can move his rook rook to a7. But then h7 comes, and after c6, we actually uh, h1 or h uh, h8 equals uh, queen check. So. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh. Oh, snap. I missed it. You have to push the pawn. Because I, I believe... Ah, oh, drat. That's okay, let me see here. So that, here, here, here. See, if we played this, he has that. So, um, so we have to actually push here to stop this check. And then there's no way to, uh, he plays here. And he comes up. And then we just take. Let me just move the king. Yeah. C6. My bad there. We'll do it right this time. We'll do it right this time. Yes, we will. Now there's no way to... But actually, you know what? We're not bad. We're just... We're learning. That's the whole thing. Okay, let's see here. Bishop takes. Okay. Good find though on uh, uh, Rook to A4 though. That was really good. We found we we found it. We solved that right comp uh, thing. We just needed C6. I have to I have to be on the lookout for that in my over-the-board games. here hmm. let's see we have queen g1 queen e2 bishop takes f4 I mean f5 okay Nice job. I'll have to go over the game. Okay, there's uh Bishop takes f five's an idea. Check you have that. Then or you have uh, you have a couple checks. Queen e two. You have to always look at these. Or uh, you have queen g one. Those are those are um, set uh, the most forcing lines. So you have to take scope on that. Okay. 
Well, if you were to do uh, a c3, you'd probably want to play uh, bishop takes f5, maybe. No, then then probably the queen would get involved. Hmm. What do you think, Morphy? Do you think it's uh, bishop takes f5 or c3? First. Bishop takes f5 first or c3 first? Uh, let's see here. C3. Queen takes E6. C2. Uh, rook F6. Queen B3, I think, would have to be played. See so if C3. Hmm, let's give it a go. Where is it? Yeah, let's see why. Oh, because the queen guard's there. There's really no point to maybe here.
and then we can actually queen. I should have seen that. Let's give it a go. Let's see what do we got here so rook here rook to a4 let's see what do we have we can take it and so rook takes a4 bishop takes a4 queen a1 that does double attack There we go. We're getting our points back. Great find there. You know what? Slowly but steadily, we're going to win this. Slowly and steadily. I got it. Knight uh, e5. Knight e5. Knight e5. If rook takes d1, then knight takes f7. Uh, uh, check. Uh, check me. Knight e5. If bishop takes uh, e5, uh, rook takes d8. And I think that's mate too. Or not mate, we win a rook. It's not mate, we win a rook. Okay, we'll take a, I promise we'll take a look after this one. I just want to finish this one out because this is a really uh, interesting one. It's not mate, by the way. I I put in before I. The, the king has a uh, spot to go to. The king to uh, king g7 would be played. Okay, let's try one more line. Knight e5. If rook takes e7, rook takes d8. Check. And so we win a rook in that line for a bishop. I don't see any downside with this move. <clears throat> Ooh. Interesting. That's kind of puzzling there. Hmm. Hmm. in here I'm, I'm looking
But what's the continuation at that point? See, we have to remember that um, after after this line, he can just go straight back. Yeah, see, that's... Um, we're so close to... KO. I can taste it. Yeah. Is it a perpetual though? What uh, what am I what am I missing here? There's something that's not right. Some, it could potentially be actually knight d7. Surprisingly, that might actually not might actually be the move. Wouldn't that be something? But I doubt. I don't think so. Of course, but we have to finish this, uh, most definitely, but we have to finish this uh, puzzle. We most definitely will. But we have to finish this puzzle first. Well, let's see if we uh, do it, if we play it right now, rook d8. He'll play rook takes uh, e7. I don't really see anything better than, uh, I guess, perpetual. But I, I'm trying to see, could the knight takes g6 be anything? Oh no, that's uh, that's my monitor. That's my uh, my. Uh, my monitor who actually uh, uh, makes sure that the trolls stay out. Yep, that was my that was my uh, uh, monitor. He's uh, yep. He takes care of all the troll. He takes care of all the trolls.
Yeah. It's my brother my brother who does it, so <laughs> that's who it was, my bro. My brother. So uh, what do you guys think about uh do you think it's just I, I really don't see anything besides D seven. Everything else looks like it uh falls apart, but let me see, knight takes Knight takes uh, g6. Check. We'll just say we'll say both knights take, and then I'm, I don't know which. We'll just have that a, a knight take. I don't think it really much matters. And we'll say f takes g6. Uh, knight takes g6. Check. H takes g6. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Maybe we sack both uh, knights, but I don't know if that actually uh, brings about anything but destruction. Maybe we uh maybe it's uh rook uh, d7. Maybe rook d7. Rook takes d7. Knight takes d7. That could be it too. Bishop uh, c5 might actually not not be a bad idea there. I'm thinking. Oops, Bishop c5. I'm I'm actually liking that. Yeah. Maybe not that. So let's see if uh, see if this rook works. Nope. That is weird. We'll uh, we'll get the link and we'll we'll do that for sure. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, I just want to get this into my memory bank. All right, let's do it. I vaguely remember we we that one was a puzzle we did before. Eh, drat. Well, come on, pull up.
Oh, well, you're black, okay. I mean, you're on the other side of the board. I gotta flip the board, so we're looking at it from your perspective. Okay. So you did the Karakon, gotcha. We check Knight C. That looks tempting, but if he plays it, you can actually pick up. Hmm. I'm surprised you didn't play that. I believe that wins. Well, I guess you could put, play check there and that would take at that point. And then, yeah, well, I guess you're right, it doesn't win. Because then, then you'd want to trade here, there. Okay, it doesn't win, I was, I was uh, mistaken. Uh, wow, look at, look at this, wouldn't that be a lovely situation to, if your opponent actually pushed, wow. That would be uh, not so delightful. So he'd basically have to, your opponent would have to retreat back and then uh, lose a pawn. Hmm, surprisingly good. Maybe he, maybe your opponent could check at that point. And then uh, you could just retreat your bishop back. That's another line. If takes, king takes, that's still under attack, so knight would have to come out. Probably the knight would, would have to come back. Yeah, I think I think it's about equal even if he even if your opponent did push. So let's see, you're down material here. Should be five. Oh yeah, bishop pair are really strong with proper play. Ooh, Harry, there we go. Harry, Harry. We have to give a shout out to si uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams for this. That's his favorite uh, pawn push, Harry. Rook uh, C4. So he'd be cheering you on for pushing Harry, going, yeah, right on. Rook A, C1. It's nice, you're doubling up there. So you're taking advantage of that.
Okay, we'll give a shout out to both. Uh, Fine Gold and uh, Grandmaster uh, Simon Williams. Shout out to both of them on the H pawn. Hey, loving, loving that. Yeah, that was a big time blunder. Let's see here. See there, there. I had a question though. Would this potentially bishop to d3 be maybe if knight here? I guess this. Uh, Huh. And here. What do you think about that line? What do you think about bishop to d3? Did you uh, consider bishop d3? This uh, threatens a tremendous amount of uh, damage. Yeah, and then here. And uh, he has to move, so when he does, you actually take. Well, you do, you actually do, uh, you win a whole rook. Yeah. It is a free, it's probably, that's probably the best move. Let, let's see what the, let's see what the engine thinks. I think you're right. I think that's probably best. Yeah, this this line's a little too um You'd have to actually play bishop takes and then the king can come up and then h I th I see what you're saying. I I yeah, it's a free knight so you so you actually win more in that line. A4, rook takes, takes. Yep, there's the free knight. Yeah, this would be really tempting to have played right here. Uh, even though there's a pin, you still can. Uh, you can't really play here because that loses. This would. This was a tempting move. This is a tempting move, but the problem is you lose your bishop, so you can't. Uh, you can't take there. So what you could actually do if you wanted to was just move your king potentially maybe maybe just get your king over and try to win via that way. He would have to play rook here at that point. Then h I need to come there and then potentially now you have uh you have your mobility of your pieces are better. Maybe even that Maybe if he moves there, you have this too. You do have a attack there, and you pick up a, a bishop in that line. So I don't know if you, if your opponent's winning at all here. He, your opponent might try b4, and then if that happens, you still you still gotta defend. So he'd have to defend, and then now you're winning. So I I, th I think the king I like the king move I like the little king dance over there I, I want to see if that's correct oh, what did, what did it think of this move 
Oh, not bad at all. It didn't, it didn't uh, enlighten my move as well. I think it liked mine better than its own. See, it's saying that that, my, my idea was actually better, surprisingly. <laughs> that was cool. So G5. And now, now you're going for the, you, oh, I see, you wanted, uh, you wanted him to surrender C7, C7 square, so that you can infiltrate in via, uh, C2. And if he plays here, then you're more than willing to trade down, because you have a bishop for, uh, let's see, you have five, and he's got six, you have a bishop for two pawns. So that's more than enough compensation. Uh, so check. Rotates bishop. King takes. The bishop can't take because he would lose a pawn. Then it would be equal material for a bishop. So he's still one pawn up. Yeah, e5 is a very vital attacking move. It opens the position up. I would have probably Oh, you played that. I guess that does work. Cuz if he plays there, you have bishop there. Huh. So I played that. Okay, that makes sense. That's actually his best opportunity at that point. Oh, you turned into a rook, okay. Oh, you did G6. There you go. And it's all over. Nice game. Really good game. For sure. Let's see. Let's see how we are doing on some time. Let's see if we have a uh, time for a couple. Yep, we got a couple more uh, time for a couple more puzzles. Gotta love the puzzles. Oh no, I gotta tell you, it's uh, a gift the lawyer's given me, I gotta say, I can't take credit for that. You know, he's uh, giving me a gift to share, and so I'm gonna share it with the chess community. And uh, that's, that's what you gotta do, like what it, what it says, let your light shine. If you have a uh, talent, you can uh, share it, share the love of the Lord. With, with them, with the chess community. Let's see here. Uh, let me see. But I'm glad you're improving and that's what matters. 
That is truly what matters. Let's see. Good water there. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, okay, boy. When there's a lot of pieces on the board is when there's um, a lot of chaos. So you gotta lo you gotta love the chaos, as uh, Simon Williams would say. He uh, he likes creating chaos on the board and then playing the positions inside of the chaos. That's uh, that's when he plays his best. So, you kind of, as they say, you kind of got to love the chaos on the board. And when you come to, uh, I guess, equality, or not equality, but um, equilibrium, as they say in uh, math, uh, with uh, chaos on the board, you'll become a better player. I kind of uh, started looking at that's when most games go tactical is during the chaotic parts of uh, the play and you're gonna have uh, a lot of that in the middle game of course that's where the tactics are usually um, shown the most sometimes you get blessed and your opponent uh, blunders in the opening and then you get to drop a, a fork or something like that on, on your opponent but yeah, you never know. Always be on the lookout for inaccurate moves. Let's see here. Let's see rook takes. takes bishop takes. He walked right into a pin. But we're in, we're actually in a. Uh, a pin as well, so it's like this. See, knight takes e5. Let's see, so knight takes e5. Knight takes uh, e5. Ah, bishop, bishop, uh, rook takes f5. I like that one. I'm uh, thinking uh, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, uh, rook takes f6, uh, if uh, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, check and we pick up the queen. Maybe I'm missing something. He doesn't have to take. So let let's just say that he let's just say he plays rook takes f six. So he doesn't take. What if he doesn't take though? Uh, that's one thing we have to uh, take into consideration. May oh, I guess we could play rook to f7 at that point. Maybe if he doesn't take, we could play rook f7.
Let's see, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, rook takes. But how, think about this though, uh, Morphe, how do we take advantage of his knight, I guess? Oh, I got it. We can play if uh, Rook takes F6. I don't know what he plays. I'll just put uh, triple dots for him. So that's usually what's there. We have Rook uh, F5. We have Rook F5, which is a double attack. And we're still attacking the, the queen at that point, too. I really, after the line morphy, I don't really see any real continuation for the attack on the knight. So I'm not, I think the king would be able to come up and defend. I don't really see a, um, a way to handle that. I'm not, that's the only reason I was thinking rook takes was then we got a discovery on the queen. We we have some attack to to play then. Uh, I'm gonna go with rook takes. I I may be wrong, and if I am, I'll, I'm sorry. But but I I don't think that I think that's see the I'll go we'll go over that one line. It's uh, equal at that point. I don't know how we could take advantage. It's not that it's not a good one. It's just we're equal. See, if we take, queen takes, uh, queen takes. Yeah, we did great though. I gotta say, that was a great job on calculating. And then bishop f5 and he'll, uh, we're equal. But in this line here, if we uh, take here and um, let me see. If he plays here, we could actually take. So he he really can't do much. It should be seven. Then we have rook uh, rook f uh, knight f three potentially, and then we just we we can actually let me see here. Knight takes, that's right. Queen takes. Knight takes. Bishop takes rook. And then bishop to e7. And now we clog the position up. We're winning. <clears throat> Great job, though. I gotta say, we're doing it. Great job. We're really uh, taking it to the next level for sure. Oh, he's one move away from causing some uh, pretty big uh, damage to our position. Let's see. Rook h1 check. Bishop takes h1. Rook takes h1 check. King takes h1. Queen takes. F1 check. Hmm. Wait a second, rook h1? What's rook h8?
But I, it would be more of a, a perpetual at that point, I'm thinking. I guess it's be I guess our best chance is perpetual, isn't it? I guess perpetual is a good yeah. We got to be careful. Got to be careful with our which check we play. Let's see. Uh queen f1. King G4, Queen F5, check, King G5, Queen check there, King there, check, King then check, check. Yeah, because we don't want him getting to, uh, we got to be careful that he can't run uh, via back. Yeah. Because what would happen is if we checked the other way, I think he, I think he actually, uh, excuse me, <laughs> pardon me. Here, if we checked here, uh, King G2, and he then can actually go G1. We take here, he runs this way, and he can actually get away at that point. So we can't allow that to happen. That's the reason we kind of we when he comes up. Uh, Where is actually sorry? That's why we came here is. So that when he comes up, queen uh, f6, if he comes here, come there, if he comes there, we, we check. There we go. Oh, wow. So we're, we got to make sure, let's see, I got to make sure, I think I could do one more puzzle. Yep, we'll do one more puzzle. Yeah, we got time. Uh, okay. Let's see, we have to um, uh, take in consideration, we have to be careful.
we have to have him uh, basically we need to uh, they call it trebuchet yeah king f5 king f5 king takes uh, h2 king uh, e4 king um, g3 uh, Not g3, sorry, uh, king g2. King uh, f4. King g1. King uh, e3. King g2. And then king, I think, e4. I think, I think it's, I think it's a, uh, he can't make any progress. Sorry, not e4. I, I uh, yeah, I think it's e3. That's what I mean. I have to redo that. Copy. King e3. So he has actually king f5, king takes, king, uh, oops, king g2, let's see, hold on, let me make sure I'm doing this right, f5 takes, king e4, yeah, you have to go king e4 at that point, king, I think this is right, king e4, king g2, king, uh, Boy, that's, that is a... So is king f5 the correct move then? So where, where did, so F5, okay, let's give that, so it wasn't F5, it was F, it's D5? Hold on, I missed something here.
You're, you're kidding me. Oh, G2. So the only line is that. It's only a winning line is there and then this is a draw. Oh wow. That's something altogether different. We'll do one more because I want to end on a positive uh, on a win. You gotta always end positive. Hey, how you doing? Let's see, Rook takes F5. Queen takes F5, F4, Rook takes F4, Rook takes E3, Rook takes E4. This is a, let's see, if we check with the queen, let me see here. I think we're almost, we almost have mate. So queen d2 check. Uh, only, well, king could go to uh, d8, king d8. Rook um, e8, king uh B seven, Queen C six, or D five, Queen uh, D five, check. Rook has to go to uh, C six. Rook uh, e7 check. Oops. If uh, king b8, king b8, then uh, queen. So it have to be king c8. King C eight. I would then queen to D seven check. King would have to go to uh, B eight and then queen B seven is made, I believe. I think that's the line. Is that the correct line? Just take a quick uh, look at it. 
Oh boy, I had to. That's like a uh, headache. Because if he goes c6, it's he can't go uh, c6 after uh, queen d2. Check. He, he can't go king c, uh, c6 because it would be queen d5 uh, mate. So he can't go uh, he can't go c6. So he lines the other way. So I'm thinking that this is right. Let's go with it. Okay, now we have to consider, um, I didn't realize he had a6 there, so we have to um, be careful after rook e7, he's got a6, so after uh, rook uh, e7, he's got king a6, so... Okay, let, let's see. We'd have to involve the queen at that point. Hold on. Let's see if we can actually go for mate here. Queen uh, a2, check. King uh, b5. Uh, rook. B5, not B7, B5. Come on. Hmm. We could push the pawn with check. That after rook takes check. Let's see if uh, queen d7 check. We can't do that because uh, rook would go to c7. So he'd block that. So I guess we are kind of stuck with uh, rook to uh, e7. That moves him up the border, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's do it. Ah, we actually get to uh, block our uh, uh, checking attack too. Let's see here, uh, queen a2, jack, king, b5, uh, c4, c4, C4. Hmm. Are you sure that's right, though? Are you 100% sure that Queen... Uh...
Okay, because you have to be a, yeah, I'm just wondering, because <laughs> we're so far into this, I just want to make sure that, uh, that we're on this, because I'm trying to look for every, um, mistake that we could, uh, kind of fall into. Let's see, if we played uh, queen b3, queen b3, he has rook c5. So I'm not sure if... Uh, queen b3, rook c5. Oh, gotcha. B3. Yeah, okay. Queen uh, B3. Check King. C5. I got it. Rook B4. Gotcha. Rook uh, B4. Uh, Queen B4. Check. Ah, uh, king, uh, d5, uh, d5, and then queen, uh, d4 is main. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I see that. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll stop here. That's, that's perfect. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You got any questions? That was a lot of moves. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I watched uh, Hikaru. Yeah, he's he is a uh, he's a calculated machine for sure. Do you have a uh, what is my favorite uh, chess book? Well, I'd have to say uh, I like Jeremy Silman's books, all of his, and I like. Uh, tactics from scratch. I have a lot of favorite books. I don't have just uh, one. But if I, I if I was to start out a uh, player on uh, in chess, I would say for a starting player, probably Jeremy Silman's Endgame course would probably be the best if. If you're asking what would be good for a um, player who's just starting out, my uh, teacher, when we first began, before I got really, really, really good, uh, the Lord bless me with a gift of chess, um, we started out with, I remember, it was a long time ago, we started out with our endgame. And so the best endgame book I've kind of seen out there right now, this is just my preference, there could be others that have, uh, you know, arisen that are as good, but the ones that I have stuck with is Jeremy Silman's Endgame. Oh, that's good too. Those are for like game studies. Those are for uh, game studies. This is for like what my teacher, my grandmaster teacher, started me out on was Endgame. He he uh, told me that you should study your Endgames first. That 
chess is studied in, uh, inversely. Yeah, people study the openings, he says, first, but you should actually start with your end game and then work back. I asked him why, uh, it was that was a long time ago, uh, I asked him back and I asked him, why why aren't we studying openings? And then what he says is, I'll show you. And then he started adding pieces and started adding pieces. He says, what are we in? We're in the middle game. I'm like, wow, I, I never thought of it about it. Then he started adding more and more pieces and eventually he set up like the French defense by at, putting pieces back. And he said, see, from the end game, I was I showed you the middle game all the way to the opening. But if I had taught you from the opening to the middle game to the end game, then uh, you would have, uh, yeah, you would have learned, but you wouldn't have gotten to see what each line looked like to get to that point. That's what he taught me. Yeah, but that that's just what my uh, grandmaster uh, teacher taught me. So, and I guess that's the best. If I was to start out a player, end game would be where I would begin. Jeremy Silman's end game course is uh, spot on. He takes you from um, basically unrated all the way up to grandmaster in end game studies. It's pretty. It's a really fun, not uh, a good. That is true. I agree with you. <clears throat> oh yeah, I've done. I I have played uh, um, uh, Puzzle Rush. I I gotta say, the problem is I uh, think too much. <laughs> uh, you know, I I, uh, I get around about uh, twenty five to thirty plus, and uh, I. I'm still working on improving in my tactics, but I think too much in the hard positions, and I overthink them, and that's where I burn up the majority of my time. So, they when they get into those uh, long ones, and of course, then you answer it, and you realize it was only a one move thing. It's funny. Yeah, it was. It's funny because you you answer them, and you're like, for real. I calculated out all these lines, and it was one move. And I, I, I always laugh at that because I'm like, I overcalculate sometimes, and I'm, I'm working on not doing that. You sometimes have to, as uh, um, Grandmaster Yadra Sarawan said, uh, from the gut. Sometimes you have to play from your gut, and you got to know it's right when you do the five-minute ones. Oh. <laughs> uh. That is true. That's uh that's actually what happened to uh, I was I watched uh uh H Grandmaster Hikaru. Uh, Nakamura. He um, one puzzle he uh, thought was a, a mate here, and he looked it up. He's like, "That should have been a mate," and, and I think it actually did work out. But the problem was, it was a mate in like four instead of a mate in three. It's what the uh, it wasn't a mate in three. It was a mate in four. So he had the right idea. It just wasn't a mate. It was one mate later. So I, I think those are kind of silly. Yeah. Okay. All right, I will. Uh, do you guys have any questions on this or any lines you wanted to look at before I log off? No questions? Alright. That is true. Okay, I'll take that as a nope. Alright.
wanted to thank you all for logging on and uh, you know helping out. We we go up, we go down, but we're learning. I'm trying to get those uh, memorized, those uh, patterns. We're getting there. <clears throat> You just have to be able to spot them, and that's one thing we're learning is uh, spotting it properly. But we have to always remember that life is about treasuring your victories and learning from your losses. Always keep it positive, too. Don't, don't ever uh, have chess be negative because you can learn something. And remember that mistakes uh, don't define you. It's how you handle them. It's like it goes back to what we just talked about, about life. It's about treasure your victories and learning from your losses. Don't let the mistakes define uh, who you are and that you can handle it. You just got to handle it positively. Think, how can I improve next time and, and get better at uh, where I was weak? And if, if you missed maybe a French line, a side line, that gives you an ample opportunity to take the fr uh, that line and plug it in and see where you can improve on it. And Bruce Lee said, there are no limits. There are plateaus and you must not stay there. You must go beyond the plateau. And we have to take what we know and apply it. That's important because you can have a lot of knowledge, but unless you apply it and share with the chess community the knowledge that you have, it's it it is uh, you're not leaving it for the next uh, generation to enjoy, and you have to be willing to take the initiative to actually do it every day. And sometimes it's a hard thing to do to schedule it in, especially with business. But you know what? You have to do that because it's what it's going to build a chess player and make a chess player great. Their discipline to uh, detail or attention to detail. That's what I mean. But we have to always remember that there are four grounds in life. There's the wayward, the rocky ground, the thorny or weedy ground, and then the good ground. The one that I find that's the hardest one to overcome for many chess players is the weedy ground or thorny ground because they, uh, they sap a lot of your time and all the growth that you would be doing you sometimes uh, stray over to something else that doesn't help in the field that you're wanting to pursue. And yeah, you're, I always remember what my mother, father, my grandmother, and my grandpa taught me was they all said this, you can't um, spend a second twice. So where you spend that second is going to affect the next uh, second in your life as well. So I, I take that to heart when I uh, think about is that what is that going to better my business, uh, or my chess? And I have to I have to consider that. And uh, sometimes those are the you want to do those things, but they're not the best for you. And you know what? That's why you got to always remember to honor the Lord, and He'll uh, direct your path and and make it sure and straight. And if He's for you, who can stand against you? And we have to always remember that um, we we have to keep moving forward. Never, never settle for second place. Always go for uh, first. If even if first place is a draw, if you did your best and it and it came out to a draw, that's fine too. But just do your best always, and don't quit. Quitting is not not on the table. That's what I was taught. Never quit. Just keep pushing forward. Try. As long as you have time on that clock, keep looking for moves. But what we always do, remember we hang up our coat, we hang up our hat, we sit down and study when most won't we do, and that makes all the difference. And as Wesley so says through the Lord Jesus, as I say God bless, I'll see you guys next time on Chess Crutcher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. And we'll keep pushing forward, and we'll strive to get back up to 2,400. We will get there. We're learning along the way. Sometimes those puzzles are, uh, we've seen them before. We just have to recall them. And that just comes with time, discipline, and uh, uh, focus. Great job, though. We solved the last one. That one was a tough one. Two thumbs up. Hoorah, great job, Team Chess Cruncher. Keep uh, pursuing chess in the fields that the Lord has for you. All right, and uh, be blessed, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys.